This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. I've said a few times on the channel that I'm not the world's biggest fan of, um, you know, 80s shreddy kind of rock guitar playing. Uh, just it just never really appealed to me um, but you know maybe it's the image as well that goes with it um, you know all kind of pointy headstocks and Floyd roses and mullet hairdos and spandex and all that and you know just ne it just doesn't do it for me um, but that nevertheless there are a few players in that genre who you know do appeal to me I mean Joe Satriani springs to mind uh, Vinnie Moore for a, a bit more of a melodic take on the whole kind of neoclassical Ingve type thing um, Gary Moore, I got into his music during the 80s when he was considered part of that sort of shred scene, I suppose. And this fella as well, uh, Jan Serka, who you may remember, certainly, I don't know if he still does, but when I used to read Guitarist magazine, he was one of the main columnists on uh, in that publication. Uh, but back in the 80s, he was um, part of this crew here, Zodiac Mind Warp and The Love Reaction. Um, yes. Uh, kind of a cartoon rock band, really. Didn't take themselves too seriously. It was all. It was always a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, possibly their biggest hit was a song called "Prime Mover," and great fun. As I say, tongue in cheek. I think just a classic rock song with a great little fun solo in it that goes a bit like this. So there you have it. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a link to the original um, music video for the song down in the description. It's fair to say that it's not a video that would uh, get made these days. Watch it and you'll um, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, let's have a little bit of a look at what's going on in that, I think, really rather fun little solo. Solo explanation. Okay, starting as always with what we're playing over. We're in C minor here. Uh, that's the overall tonality. And um, as you're going to see, we're going to be using C minor pentatonic for the solo. Now, if you take the notes of C minor pentatonic, C, E flat, F, G, and B flat... Out of those five notes, you can make four power chords. With the C and the G note, you get a C5. With the B flat and the F note, you get a B flat 5. With the E flat and the B flat note, you get um, an E flat 5. And with the F and the C note, you get an F5. And we can play those chords all over the neck. We can play, for instance, the F5 and B flat 5 down there, as we're going to do in this chord sequence, which goes like this. Essentially, we go twice through that, and then come out of the solo on a G5 chord. So, C minor is the overall tonality. We're going to be using C minor pentatonic. And we use three different positions of that scale in the solo. We start in position three, which is at the 13th fret. Looks like this. And the opening lick, that kind of slightly flashy sounding one, is um, played on the second and third strings. We start with a string bend, 15th fret on the third string. And then we go to the 13th fret, which is the same note we've just bent to, but on a different string, uh, a C note. Um, and we do a hammer-on pull-off between that and the E-flat note at the uh, 16th fret. So slowly that lick goes like this. There's the bend. Then we have like that. And if you keep this finger anchored here, and you can do this kind of string bend with just, I, I tend to use my second finger, you can get this. which is really easy, I think, to, to work up to speed. Like that. Uh, you can also play it down here. This is an option. Um, bending the 11th fret on the second string and doing the hammer-on pull-off between the 8th and 11th frets on the top E string. It could be played there. I just find it easier to play it up here. Like that. Anyway... Um, we do, after that lick there, come down to uh, position one. 
at the 8th fret. Uh, we... For that little lick there. Just straight ahead, descending run coming down that C minor pentatonic position one. We then go up to position four of the C minor pentatonic uh, at the 15th fret. Like that. With this uh, bend here at the 18th fret on the B string, whilst simultaneously holding the uh, 18th fret on the top E string to get that kind of screaming sort of sound. Like that. And we just get a little bit of mileage out of that. And then end that lick there on the uh, C note 17th fret on the third string. Um, what follows after that is just basically the closing run of the solo where we um, essentially just walk up a C minor pentatonic. 8th fret on the 6th string to 6th fret on the 5th uh, string. Then 10th fret on the 5th string to 8th fret on the 4th string. Then 10th fret on the 4th string to 8th on the 3rd. Then, uh, where are we now? Yeah, 12th fret on the 3rd string to 11th fret on the 2nd string. Then essentially move that shape up 5 frets. So we're going 17th fret on the 3rd string to 16th on the um, second string and then bend the 18th fret uh, B string note um, basically up to a G and then play that G again on the top E string and then bend the 18th fret B flat note on the top E string up to a C so that entire run goes like that Brilliantly effective little run in, I think, a very effective and fun solo um, that has just that little kind of a slightly borderline shreddy kind of lick at the beginning, which, you know, is, I think, quite easy to, or manageable, it's accessible. I won't use words like easy because there's bound to be somebody that says, I couldn't play it very easily, but, you know, it's accessible. You can uh, probably get that up to speed a lot quicker than um, a lot of shreddy licks. And... <laughs> The old adage is true, though, get it right, then get it fast, not the other way around. But that's just, that's it. Like that. And it's very Clapton-y in a way. Clapton would often go and kind of not put the bend in, but, you know, do that as well, if you want. Like that. And, you know, you work on a few variations of that in different positions, wherever you can kind of pull that shape off. And um, you've got a nice... Um, impressive lick that you can throw into solos so there you go now you know what's going on with the solo go away and have some fun with it and as always you'll find a full tab for the solo in both guitar pro and pdf formats along with a clip of me playing it uh, that explanation you've just seen there and a backing track to play along with yourself that's all up on my patreon page there's the address link is in the description it's currently i believe uh three dollars or three pound a month to uh, to sign up for that and you get all of these tabs and everything and uh, extra resources that go along with the youtube videos massive massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways all of which are linked down in the description and that's pretty much it for today folks hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative and hopefully a little bit entertaining um if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like as well while you're at it don't forget we have a live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars and all manner of things it's a great way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now